All right, welcome back to Steve John Pumpkins. Uh, haven't seen you in about a month, probably. I've done some shorts, but uh, big outage at work, and I told you I wouldn't be here for a while. And I have been doing a lot of work. We're going to check it out. Uh, right now, we're on one of the bright, sunny moments of May. I uh, expected some storms coming in here shortly. They're rolling in back there in the back already. I got about an hour and a half before they're expected to get here. And I've been brewing me some compost tea. And I'm going to try and get it uh, distributed out here. Uh, it's going for a little over 48 hours now. And we'll take a little closer look at this. Uh, I'm going to try and get it out here in the patch before this rain comes. You know, let the rain soak it in real good. So I got a uh, stainless tub that we actually purchased to uh, scald pigs in and haven't ever used it for that yet. So right now it's dual purposing for me and I'm making compost tea in it. This holds about 75 gallons and you'll see this little air hose right here. I got a aero mixer in here. My first year with aero mixer. I always said I would never ever buy an aero mixer. But it was on my Christmas list, and I actually got two of them, uh, one here, and I got another one in there. And uh, I will say I've been really pleased with the mixing capabilities of it, and love that it uh, puts the air in here. But I did uh, mix a barrel of feed the other day, and I tried to use the air mixer to uh, pump it out through a garden hose. And I was not real thrilled with the capabilities of pumping, but... As far as mixing goes, it was amazing. Got my tea bag in here. Whoops, that's not gonna be good. This is a cheesecloth doubled over, and I'm gonna show you all the goodies that I put in here. Look at all this stuff growing on it. Just, yeah, I'm loving this. So what's in the bag, I started off pretty simple again, it's two uh, cheese claws right on top of each other and I piled all the stuff in it, um, made a real nice tight ball and tied it up. And I started off with the uh, Wallace Wow Wonder Brew, I got one packages of this in there, I got enough to last me another four or five weeks. I put about a quarter cup of 5-2 Wallace Wow Wonder Blend and about two cups of uh, earthworm castings. So this is my first time using uh, compost tea. I wanted to do it last year. We never got to that point. Uh, I'm going to use it often this year. I also put a little bit of Epic Gardening Azos and Mycos Wettable Powder and some Wallace Wow Mycorrhizal Inoculant and uh, put all that in the bag as well. Uh, also about two cups of kelp meal. And this has been going for a little over 48 hours now. I'm gonna get my pump set up here. I got a, a submersible sump that does decent with the garden hose. I'm gonna stick it in here. I'm actually brought about 10 gallons of this and take over to the garden and put on my tomatoes and get the rest of it on these plants. Since we're over at the patch, we'll uh, take a look at some things I got going on. This is my 150 plant, and you can see here I got some weed control I need to do, but I've been trying to get that done between these rainstorms. It's been an extremely wet month, and hardly a dry moment. Got plenty of walk boards out through here, and I've kind of got them strategically placed right now because I'm gonna put my watering system in, which I have not gotten to yet. Going away from impact sprinklers this year and going to uh, 20 PSI wobblers. I gotta close this because Major likes to come in here. All right, as I stand on the walk board, I try to get better at walk boards this year, and I made me a whole bunch the other day out of some scrap lumber that I acquired, and I still need some more. Last year, I uh, pretty much only had a few walk boards and they got grown over and I found myself not really using them like they should be used so try and get better at that this year but all right the 150 I have not uh marked the boundary yet again I'm trying to get these weeds out of here before I do that and uh, get everything marked off but um 
I'll get that done in the next couple of days. Yeah, this is the 1631 Cosmores, what I chose for my 150 plant. And the reason I chose this, I was going to do another 872 Cosmore based on the results that I did last year with the downy mildew plant. But I bought this in a seed auction alongside of some other Cosmore seeds. And as soon as I won this lot, Doug messaged me and said, don't be afraid 1631. So... I'm not being afraid 1631. It is the 150 patch plant and already got a couple issues with it. Number one, you can see the leaf damage there. This thing got attacked horribly by cucumber beetles. I mean, early, right off the bat. And you can see a dead one right here. So what I was doing, after I realized what was going on, I made me up a little seven uh, concoction in here, a low dose of seven, and I was just uh, spraying it down like that. But I have actually started my merit systemic um, regimen. I started that two days ago, and the next day I came out, and there's dead cucumber beetles all over all my plants, all of them. So that's doing the job. I hope this thing turns around and survives that cucumber beetle one slot you can see here and they just obliterated this leaf and picking off dead beetles everywhere well, that one's still trying to kick around and then also I, somehow I planted the wrong direction and this is going to be the left side border of my patch it's my wind fence right here that's all the patch that i have on this side and it was growing straight at it so the last couple of days i've been trying to turn it around and get going back up this way and i'm planning on doing eight feet here and i can't remember what the calculation is i'll have to redo the math and uh, i'll run my border markers up this way but again i need to get these weeds cleaned out of here before i do that and speaking of weeds You'll see my patch is covered in grow fabric. I got some weed control I need to do here. I worked on it a little bit yesterday. I need to get some more, but I'm not sold on this fabric. I hate growing on fabric because I can't see my soil. That just drives me absolutely crazy. But you see it's kind of puffing up here. I don't know if you can tell that. And I peeked underneath of that yesterday and it's got freaking weeds growing underneath these first two sections here. So... You know, I already did not want to do this. I'm already thinking about pulling it up. And it's a little heartbreaking for me. It took a lot of time to do this. And I didn't even finish. See, I didn't even get on the end down there. Um, I did buy some clethodem. I have not treated yet. Again, uh, mainly because, number one, i got to get all this up if that's the route I'm going to go. And number two, we just haven't had enough dry weather to do that. Uh, I can't put that down in the rain. It'll just wash it all away and it won't do any good. And I also have preen. Uh, this is definitely going to get clethodum and preen in the 150 for sure. I'm sold on. That's going to happen. It's not going to get covered. But I haven't made a decision on this yet. I'm really leaning towards taking it all out and, uh, and dosing it with clethodum and preen. I'm really worried about the clethodon uh, affecting the plants and I've talked to a few folks and they all like it and have had good results with it so I'm going to spend a few more days thinking about that uh, get through this wet rainy weather and get in here and get some of these weeds mitigated and then I'll make a decision on that in the next couple of days I'm standing right by the 1707 and a half Casper you see it's flagging a little bit but I'm getting ready to take care of that it's right at about 10 feet now. It's starting to lay some secondaries and then get in here and uh, get busy on vine bearing. I'm running a little bit behind on that. And over there is the 1965 and a half road ball. And it is, uh, yesterday it was about two feet behind uh, the Casper's plant, but now they look like they're pretty well caught up to each other. And both of these were in the huts, uh, heated with heating cables. And I just had the uh, starter cables. It didn't really do what I wanted them to do, what I thought they were going to do. And matter of fact, they're not even plugged in right now. Um, I think next year I'm definitely going to go the gutter heating cable route. So it kind of made me a border to walk around this patch. I moved everything last year. We started everything on the border fence. This is my neighbor's property over here. 
and it got grown over with weeds. I mean, this tall, way over the fence, and they didn't like it. I didn't like it, so I moved everything up and put a small wind fence up here to mark the border of my grow area, and then hopefully I'll be able to maintain the weeds out of this, and then the neighbors are happy and I'm happy. And I'm using it for a path to get in the patch. All right, this is the 1229.7 row ball. So I was telling Doc about losing my Kaisamore plants, which are right there. We'll talk about those in a second. And he offered me up a plant. And it's not looking great right now. I don't know what in the world is going on here. But I think it's going to be okay. It is starting to vine out a little bit. It's uh, looks a little stressed. And I... Yeah, I, I don't know what to say about it. This, this leaf right here was, I mean, it started doing that like the day after I put it in the ground. I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'm getting some flag in here, but I'm going to give it some moisture and I'll help it out with that. 2266 Cosmore. So I had two of them right here. I had one right here. And again, I need to do some weed control. I'm getting on that. Uh, I had one right here and it ribbon vined on me and you know I was actually going to grow it as a learning experience and see what I could do with it but it just kept getting worse. I'm telling you, this thing had like five growing tips on the end of it. It was just ridiculous. So this was the backup to that plant. It's also a 2266 Cosmore and it laid over like it was dead. Like like somebody shot it up with cyanide or something and it i just thought it was gone and that's when i had the discussion with doc and he gave me that plant which was supposed to go here but when i came here to plant i was like you know what this thing looks like it's going to make it and now it's starting to vine out and uh, it still looks a little rough but i think it's going to make it and so that's what made me decide to go ahead and put the 1229 rota ball up there and we're going to try and grow them both out uh, you already know if you've been following me, I had the 2222 Ginger, the uh, Godzilla seed was not a good germination. I had it uh, right in there and pulled it out yesterday. It looked like it was going to try and grow, but um, yesterday uh, when I inspected, it just it's not doing anything. Uh, and yeah, I decided to move on from it, and I'll probably start prepping this area for some uh, field pumpkin activity, which will be coming pretty soon. And then I'm not going to walk through the patch, but all the way over there. So funny story with that. That's the 2030 Tobac. So I germinated the 2030 Tobac, but I wasn't even convinced if I was going to try and grow it. I want to grow a green one, but I was like, maybe this year's not the year to do that. Maybe we need to figure out these giant pumpkins first. But funny story about that plant over there. Um... So I germinated the 2424 Caspers, which was a replacement to the 2222 Ginger, and it was looking really good. I mean, it was looking amazing. I uh, put it down there. So these two were in huts uh, about a week ahead of this, and the Cosmore plant down there, I planted the same day as the 2424 Caspers, which was over there. And you see these uh, little, uh, these are cattle panel with just a six mil plastic on them. I made a frame, draped a kettle panel over top of it, stapled it in, and then uh, put the six mil over top of it. Those were the houses for these two. And I got this one planted, got the house over top of it. Then I went over there, I got it planted, and I didn't get the house over top of it, and it was time to feed the pigs, so I went over and helped Kelly feed the pigs, and then, you know, I was gone 30 minutes probably. When I got back and Major had dug up the 2424 Caspers. He was after the Wallace Well starter packs. He put four starter packs in each plant and he just tossed the plant to the side and got those starter packs out of there and shred them to pieces. So the 2424, I did, I put it right back in the ground, but he'd already destroyed the roots on it, digging it up. It was uh, collateral damage and I thought it was going to be okay, but it wasn't even close to being okay. So then I decided, well, I got the 2030 toe back in the house. So I went ahead and put the 2030 toe back over there. Now, 2030 toe back had a problem right off the bat. I lost growing tip on it. Within days of planting it out here, it just withered away. Uh, so right now I'm pushing a secondary on that plant. I think that's going to be a good learning experience for me too because I've never done that before. And so we'll see what we get. 
Wow, finally done. I think I'm gonna have to do some math on this tub. I think my 75 gallons is not quite right. Just in time, storm's coming in. One already went by, just a bunch of thunder and no rain at all. So hopefully this one will give me a little bit of rain and wash in all this uh, compost tea. Um, I think people driving around on the road out here, probably looking over here saying, look at that idiot. It's getting ready to rain while I see water in his garden. But they just don't know. If you brew it, you gotta use it, right? I think while putting the compost tea in here, I almost made my decision that all this is coming out of here. Not quite yet. Stay tuned for that. Next time you see me, it'll either still be here and I'll be committed to it or it'll be gone. Um, if it goes away, clefidum and preen are going to take its place. Uh, I'm going to have to make a decision on that probably by the end of tomorrow because it's 1707 it really needs to be buried in. I haven't buried in the vine yet where it's on top of the ground color because I haven't made a decision on that yet. I have to do that by tomorrow. That will be done by tomorrow one way or the other. I'm either going to bury in that vine or I'm going to take all this out and still bury it. Uh, thanks a lot for checking this out. Uh, stay tuned for, for more. Steve's Giant Pumpkins at Hemtai Homestead.